Hey, thank you so much for connecting and stopping by to watch this video. I trust it's going to bless you. I'm going to share something with you that is going to awaken and quicken your spirit to be aware of the times we are living in and to rise up and do what God is calling you to do. So I pray just pause. I know you might be wanting to do something else. Just pause and watch this video till the very end. I promise it to change your life. I promise it to transform you. Uh, several years ago, I had this dream and I know it wasn't, there are some dreams you have that are ordinary dreams, but there are other dreams that you have, you know, that they are revelations that God is giving you. God is trying to communicate something to you. And this was one of those prophetic dreams that God gave me. And in the dream, uh, something was happening that was so significant. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because last week, as I prepared to preach God's word to our church, God reminded me of that dream and told me that this is the times we are living, that what I showed you decades ago, it's still relevant today. And so let me, let me just go ahead and tell you what the dream was all about. In the dream, it's like we were getting ready for war. And we had two armies. One army was dressed. They were ready. They were in their uniforms. They had their weapons. They were standing um, uh, on the lines. Like everybody was in their rank. You couldn't even see a twisted rank. Everyone was on the line, straight lines, uniforms, everything to match their weapons ready. It's almost like they were just waiting for a command. And when the command was given, they were ready to go forth and start fighting. And on the other side, I was trying to see, okay, where is the opposing army that's supposed to fight with this um, army that is already set? Where is the opposing army? And as I turned to the other side, I realized that they were not even ready for fight. They, didn't, they were not even aware of what was happening. You had people who were like in trucks, uh, just chit-chatting. We had people who were shopping. You had, it, it was just like, chaos and destruction people were just doing different things and they were not aware of the times they were not aware of the season they were not aware of the war that was eminent that was so close to their nostrils and guess what the army that was ready equipped in their ranks was the enemy's army the devil's army in other words but the army that was distracted scattered not paying attention was the Christians. It was the church it represented the church it represented the believers. And immediately when I saw that and I saw the destruction that was happening among the Christians, everybody just about their own business, just going back and forth, just distracted. I started like shouting and I started trying to call people's attention. There were some of the people that I knew and, and I didn't know everybody. So I started calling people's attention and calling their names and calling them, come on, let's get ready. We have to train. We have to be on our ranks. The enemy is ready. His army is set. They are just waiting for the command. And then the battle will start. And the more I shouted, the more distracted it seemed the way. It's like nobody really cared about what I was saying. The more I shouted, nobody really cared. And my heart was so broken. And suddenly I remembered because the Lord was standing right by me. And I turned, I was like, God, what do I do? Your people are distracted. What do I do? I'm trying to get their attention. They are not coming. They are not wanting to listen. And something the Lord told me that uh, shaped and that has changed me so powerfully is he said, you can't get their attention by shouting at them. You can't get their attention by trying to call them in the natural to come. And then he told me, go and start praying. He says, start praying for them in the spirit. And because I asked a lot, so how do I pray? What do I pray for? He says, start praying in the spirit. He says, the more you pray for them in the spirit, the more they are going to be quickened and start becoming aware of what was happening. And right there, right in the presence of the Lord, I started praying. And I started praying in the spirit. And I started praying in the spirit. It was amazing what happened. It's like, as I started praying, it's almost like people were becoming conscious. There was like an awareness, a consciousness of the times that they were in, of the, the eminence of the battle that was coming. It's like people started becoming aware one after the other. It wasn't like everybody became aware at the same time. But one after the other, people were like waking up from the slumber, waking up from the distraction, getting up from where they were. And it's, 
like little by little this army started forming and I was excited and the Lord told me keep praying and then I woke up and I was like God what is this what are you trying to tell me and the Lord told me he said he said I'm a the church is so distracted and so caught up with many things that we forget that we are in a battle. And our adversary, the enemy, he is not joking. He is ready, all his weapons and everything it takes to fight this battle, he has it ready. But the church, we are distracted, we are caught up by so many things. Uh, we are being selfish, we are being self-centered and and as I prayed and as I thought, as the Lord reminded me of this dream again last week, I felt like never have we been in the battle that is real than we are in the present situation. When I talk about the battle, I'm not talking about the war in Ukraine or the wars that are happening around the world. That's all. I'm not talking about physical battles, but we are in spiritual warfare. The clock is ticking. And I think it is time, I believe it's time for the church to arise. It's time for the warriors to arise. It's time for the intercessors to arise. Yes, we have a church that is praying. And I believe God wants us to pray for our personal needs. I believe God wants us to pray for the things that we want. But much more, I believe that God is looking for men and women who will stand in the gap for his church, who will make intercession, who will cry out for the sleeping giant to arise. I believe God is looking for people, believers, who are going to be intercessors, who will stand in the gap and not slumber no matter what we're going to say god give us the grace we will cry out we will raise our voices we will intercede until we see your army gathered and the good news is that the army is gathering the army is gathering from the north the south the east and the west but still it's so minute compared to the number that are sleeping and i so believe like the bible says in the book of proverbs Sorry, in the book of Joel, chapter nine, chapter three, from verse nine. In Joel, chapter three, from verse nine, the Bible says, "Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. Rouse the warriors. Wake up the fighting men, and let them draw near." And the Lord says, "Beat your plowshares to sword. What initially was meant for food, what initially was meant for your well-being, the prayer time that you spent, God, I need a breakthrough. I need all of this. God is like, yes, pray for your big breakthrough. But He says, would you start standing in the gap for the nations? Would you start standing in the gap for God to raise an army for a generation that is going to make a difference in the world?" It says, beat your plowshares into salt and your pruning hooks into space. Let the weakling say, I am strong. Come quickly, all nations from every side and assemble. Bring down your warriors, oh God. I believe that God is calling the warriors to arise. God is calling his army to arise. It's time when the Lord is mobilizing an army from every side, the north, the south, the east, the west, the young ones, God is mobilizing them. And you might feel like you are so weak. You might feel like, God, I don't have what it takes. I want to encourage you. You don't really have to have much. You need the willingness of heart. And you will be amazed by what God does. Why do I say that? As I was preparing to share this, these two scriptures came to my mind. The first one is in 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 2. The Bible says, And all that were in distress and oppressed with death, and under affliction gathered themselves unto him, talking about unto David, and he became their prince. And there were with him about 400 men. So this is David when he has fled from Saul. And a few people followed him. The Bible says about 400. But a few people that follow him, it's incredible the description that the scripture tells us about those people. They were oppressed. They were in distress. They were indebted. They were under affliction. Those were the kind of people who followed David. But when you look at the book of Chronicles, when you read through Chronicles chapter 12 and chapter 13, and you see the characteristics of each of these men, 
and women who had followed David, who were initially they were poor, initially they were weak, initially they were indebted. But if you look at the book of Chronicles, it's a whole different story. They had become the, the Bible calls them the mighty men of David. And in 2 Chronicles chapter 12, the last verse, verse 38 says, All these men of war who could keep ranks came to Hebron with a loyal heart to make David king over Israel. And the, sorry, and all of Israel to make David king over all of Israel. And the rest of Israel were of one mind to make David king. And we, we are not wanting to make, we are not, we are not interceding. Uh, David's time is over. Now we are wanting to make Jesus king over the nations. We want to see him exalted as king of kings, as lord of lords, over every tribe, over every tongue, over every nation. We want to see Jesus exalted as king of kings over the children, over the teenagers, over the youth, over the adults, over the elderly, over people from every race, the whites, the black, the, the, the Hispanics. We want to see Jesus exalted and crowned king. But what God is looking for, just like David, it's not the strong, it's the willing. The willing men and women came to David indebted in difficult situation. But as they came to David, he was able to train them to become a mighty man who defeated and conquered over and over again. Their exploits are countless. And I strongly believe that the reason why the Lord showed me that revelation is because he's waking and rousing up again mighty men and women. Would you arise? Would you start in this season? And, and as the Lord showed me in the revelation that you can't, you, can't, you can't call the mighty men just by talking. You can't talk people to wake up. Some of these mighty men, they are still living in sin. They don't even have a relationship with Jesus yet. It's not just about the natural talking, but what if we start gathering together as God's people? Or what if in your closet you start saying, God, I'm going to just intercede one hour a day for this army. Yes, I'm going to pray for my needs, but just one hour a day, I'm going to pray in the spirit for the church to start arising. I'm going to pray in the spirit for the army that is still, those who are still lost, have not come to a relationship, who are part of this army, for them to start being quickened. Would you join me and let's do that together? Because an army is rising and we will be unstoppable. It's going to be an unstoppable army. It's going to be an army that is going to take territories for Christ. But that is only possible when we who are the church will arise and make intercession for this army. Someone will just pray together for us, for you was watching that we will all arise. <laughs> Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, that there is no, nothing that is hidden with you. You are the revealer of secrets. Thank you that you love us, your church, so much that you're willing to reveal to us secret things that we know not. And so, Father, I pray for myself, for your church, for this army that you are raising, that you will quicken us from the inside in the name of Jesus. I call forth the weak ones. I call for the feeble ones. I call for those who have, who have stumbled. I call for those, those who are being distracted. I call you forth from out of your sleeping places. I command you to arise, O oh warrior, in the name of Jesus. I call you forth out of the place of slumber. I call you forth out from every distraction. I break the spirit of distraction from off your life and I call you to arise and take your place in this end time in the name of Jesus. I call the army to arise. I call the army to arise like the Bible says, let the weak say I am strong. I declare to those who are weak, I speak strength to you. To those who feel down, I speak Hope to you, to those who feel depressed, I speak the life of God in the inside of you. In the name of Jesus, arise, army, arise. Awake, O oh, he that sleepeth, and Christ will rise anew. Arise, O oh, army, arise in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Bless you, God. 
We give you praise in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this incredible army that is rising in Jesus' name. Uh, I want you to like this video, but I also want you to share it. Share it with a believer. Share it with someone who needs to arise. Or share it with an army, with, with someone who is on the front line already, who has been intensifying their prayer, who's been, who knows, who's aware of the time. Share it with someone. Let's spread the news. Let the church be aware of what is happening so that this army will arise and take position and come out from the place of destruction. So thank you so much. God bless you. And subscribe to this channel so that anytime I post something, new you are going to be aware of that god bless you have a great day bye